Good evening, welcome to Mashiach Mystery Series. So this evening we are going to be discussing what is called the second era, the second Kufa of Yemaisa Mashiach. So in in previous shiurim, in our previous lectures, we talked about the different descriptions about the way the world was going to look when Mashiach comes. On the one hand, Rambam seems to say that when Mashiach will come, there will be no miracles. That's what the Rambam says in Mishnah Torah. On the other hand, if you look with uh, the, the other uh, commentaries, the Ravid, and even the Rambam himself and his Egeris Teman, the Rambam says that in fact there will be miracles when Mashiach comes, Mashiach will make miracles. We discussed that there's different aspects of a Mashiach. On the one hand, the purpose of Mashiach is that he should not to not to uh, not to uh, change the world, so to say, in the sense that he uh, that, in other words, not to say that in order for Mashiach to bring the world to a state of the completion of Torah mitzvahs, Mashiach will need to change the world and make miracles. The world, in its natural state, will will be able to fulfill Hashem's will. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, the ultimate purpose of Mashiach is to reveal the level of elikus, the level of godliness, which which is completely beyond, which completely transcends this world. And that expresses itself in miracles. So there's these two aspects of Mashiach. So, in other words, on the one hand, Mashiach is above the world, but he's within the world. That was what we discussed in the previous year in the previous lectures. So, this evening, I want to take this a, a step further. So, Although in Mishnah Torah the Rambam seems to make it uh, pretty, pretty uh, clear that you shouldn't think that there's going to be any miracles, but elsewhere the Rambam makes it pretty clear that there is definitely going to be a miracle. So well, let's we start with what the Rambam says in Hilchus Malachim. We just had uh, recently the Siyum HaRambam. We just completed the, the uh, 38th cycle of Rambam. So we just concluded this halacha. The Rambam says in the 12th chapter of Hilchus Malachim, the first halachim. Don't think that when Mashiach will come, anything of the way the world works will become battle, will stop. Or it will be any type of innovation and creation. The world will follow its course. And the Rambam points out, but sister, it says that the wolf will lie with the lamb. Marshal Vahida, that's just all a parable. So that's the Rambam's position. Now the big question is the Rambam himself makes it clear in um, first of all in his Purush Hamashnayas and his commentary on the Mishnah in the in his introduction to Parakhalik. Likewise also the Rambam wrote Igeras Trias Hamesim, letter about Trias Hamesim. Over there, the Rabbah makes it clear that one of the principles, one of the foundations of our faith is the belief in Trias Hamesim, the belief in the resurrection of the dead. So, it's not clear in Pirush Hamashnayas, it's not so clear why Trias Hamesim is a, is, is a, is a, uh, is such a fundament, is so it's so important why this is one of the principles of faith. It's not so clear. But in the Egeus Trias HaMesim, the Rambam makes the following point. He say, the Rambam says that the reason why we're explaining that Trias HaMesim is going to happen in the literal sense is because if you believe that Hashem created the world, you have to believe that all miracles are possible. Even miracles that completely transcend nature. The one who created nature is able to break nature. 
So therefore, the belief in miracles like Tchias Hamesim is a, is, a, is, is, a, is a fundamental principle of our faith. In other words, it's our belief. It goes hand in hand with the belief that Hashem created the world from nothing, that He created nature. So we believe that He could break nature. Part of the belief, the yeah, part of our of, of belief in Hashem is to believe in miracles. That's what the Rambam says. And therefore, since Tchias Hamesim, to explain it in other in any other way than the literal sense. Is is taking the is taking the psukim, taking the voices out of the of, out of what they mean. You can't really explain that it, that when the pasuk says that in, in Daniel, in the, in the book of Daniel, it talks about how there's going to be tchias amesim. You can't really explain it in in uh, that it means a muscle, that it means that, that it's just an allegory or some type of uh, parable for something. So therefore, the Rambam says you have to say that Chiyas Hamesim means Kipshute. It means in the literal sense, the the dead will be resurrected. So in other words, the Rambam is saying over here that we do believe that there will be miracles. So the question is, so how does that fit with what the Rambam says in Mishnah Torah that when Mashiach will come, there won't be miracles? Like, how do the two things go together? So the Rambam says the following. You see, in the, the, this is the famous Sicha in Chedah uh, Chavzai, in the 27th volume of Lakuti Sicha, in Parshat Bichu Kaisai, that the Rebbe brings out this whole concept. How Darfin Zogdin as late in Rambam, Zayn in Dost Tzvei Bazunduri in Yonim, Un in Tzvei Bazunduri Zmanim. So you have to say, according to the Rambam, these are two different concepts. Two, and, and they'll be in two, two completely different time periods. As it done, the Indian who is man in the Yemaisa Mashiach versus Fabunin with Biyasa Mashiach, you have, there was a time, there's the concept, there's part of Yemaisa Mashiach of the Messianic era that's connected with the coming of Mashiach. And as it done, Bazun, the Indian who is man in Yemaisa, there's a different concept, there's a whole different era. That's going to be added on later after the initial time period of the Messianic era. As well as Sue coming on Hagas, Zachin Velcha the Rebish to Vaton and Yenim Zaman. There's going to be new things that the Hashem is going to do in, the, in that time. Kudel Oich in Yenim from Shirim and Hagas Shalaylam. There will be things where Hashem will change the nature of the world. Does what Zayin and Ashpetu Dikin Zaman and Yemaisa Mashiach Kufa. It's going to be in a later time period within the Messianic era. Within Yemaisa Mashiach, exactly. So, in other words, the Rebbe is saying over here that what's clear is that those two time periods, the two eras, so to say, within Yemai Mashiach, within the Messianic era, there's two eras, yeah. so to say. So, and they both have two, and they both, that's two different inyanim, two different ideas. So there's Yemai Mashiach, Mashiach's going to come, and there's everything that he's going to bring, he's going to bring back the Shlemus of Torah Mitzvahs, the completion of all of Torah Mitzvahs. And then there's going to be a later time period when 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 Tchias Hamesim is going to happen. There's going to be the resurrection of the dead, and it's a whole different concept, whole different idea. So what I want to try to understand over here is so what exactly differentiates and what exactly is the difference between these two time periods, and why is why is the Rebbe saying that Tchias Hamesim is going to happen a completely different time period? I understand it's a different concept. It's not connected with. B.S. Mashiach, as we discussed in previous shiurim, the whole idea of Mashiach is connected with um, being invested in nature, not breaking the world. The question is, so why is it that Tchias HaMesim is a completely different idea? Why is this something that can happen in a completely different time period? So let's try to clarify this idea. So... In order to explain, uh, in order to explain it, let's begin with the following. So, one of the basics of Chassidus, what Chassidus teaches us, based on the, what uh, it says concerning the first Jew, Avram Avinu, it says, "Va va'yikra shom b'shem Hashem keil olam." It says that he called there in the name of Hashem, keil olam, literally God world. So, seemingly, it should have said keil ha'olam. That he called over there in the name of the God of the world. Why does it say Kale Oilam, God World? Because Avraham Avinu's Av- Av- message was that the world and Elakus, world and godliness, are not two separate things. 
they're really one and the same. The world is really godly. And this is a fundamental idea that was taught by the Baal Shem Tev and his successors and specifically from the Alter Rebbe and on the Rabbeim of Chassidus Chabad. So what's the idea? The idea is like this. As the Alter Rebbe explains in the second part of Tanya and Shah Yichud Bemuna, the second section, that Hashem didn't just create the world once upon a time. It's not just a one-time occurrence. Hashem didn't just create the world in the six days of creation and that was it. But rather, like it says in Vedrush Tehillim, Li'olam Havayet Dvarch and Nitzav HaShemayim. It says, You, Hashem, your word is constantly standing in the heavens. In other words, the word that Hashem used to create the world, to create the heavens, is constantly creating the world every single second. And if it wouldn't, con- and if it wouldn't constantly create the world every single second, the world would cease to exist. So based on that, the Alter Rebbe says what follows is that in essence, really, the world is not a separate existence from Hashem, but its whole existence is entirely dependent on the word of Hashem which is creating it. And therefore, in essence, really, the whole existence of the world is really just an expression of the word of Hashem. Or as al describes it, it's like Keziv Hashem is B'Shem. It's like the way of the sun which is inward within the sun itself. So... The question is, so why don't that the Alter Rebbe asks over there in Tanya? So why is it? Why, why don't we feel that way? If the if the if if the truth is that really the world is just an expression, it's just the word of Hashem, which is being expressed, but it's not an independent existence. So why do we feel that we're independent? So the answer is, the Alter Rebbe says, is there's something called the symptom. Something called the symptom. The symptom is that Hashem hid the Dvar Hashem. That the Dvar Hashem is not felt, and the, the world feels that it's an independent existence. So the question is: So what's the purpose of, of, of all of this? What's the purpose of all? Of this? Why did Hashem create the world in such a way? If it's really the world is an expression of Hashem, so why did Hashem create the world in such a way that it feels independent? So the Alter Rebbe says over there in Tanya, in Perak Zion, the seventh chapter of Shari Yechud Vemuna. Because Hashem's ultimate goal is his Galus Malchusei Ba'olam, that his kingship should be revealed in the world. What's the concept of Malchus? We discussed this in previous Shirim as well. Ein Melech Balayan, but there can't be a king without a nation. And therefore, there has to be, what's the, what's the concept of a nation? The concept of a nation is that there is, a, there is something which is separate. There, is, there are subjects there are servants that are not the king, that are independent entities, and he is king over them. So that's Hashem's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is that he should be the king in this world. And how is that fulfilled practically? Through us fulfilling his commandments. Mitzvah Samalach, what are all of Hashem's commandments? He's the king, and his, his commandments, they are revealing his kingship in the world. They are showing that he is king, because we are fulfilling his will. So, what is Yemaisa Mashiach all about? Yemaisa, as we discussed previously, Yemaisa Mashiach is the time when that will be ultimately revealed. That Hashem is the king of the world. His Galas Malchusei Ba'ilam. So, it's interesting that the Rambam also, in the, in the beginning of uh, Hilchas Yesodi HaTorah, so he also brings out all the, this, this whole idea. He says, Yesodi HaYesodi Says the foundation of all foundations is what is Leda Shiyesha Matzirishin that there is a first existence. Vahu Mamsi Kolnimsa and he makes everything exist. Rebbe, the Rebbe points out he doesn't say that he made everything exist. He he's Mamsi Kolnimsa. He's presently making every single thing exist. And everything that exists in heaven and earth and everything in between it only exists. From Hashem's true, true existence, and he continues in, 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 the, in the fifth halacha. He says this existence, He is the God of the world. He's the master of the world, and so on and so forth. And he says that's and he says that's the mitzvah of believing in Hashem. And then if you go to the end of Rambam, if you go to the last parak, Hilchas Malachim, the Rambam says what's going to happen when Mashiach comes? We're all going to be totally involved in knowing Hashem. So that's what Mashiach is all about. That's what Mashiach is all about 
bringing back the Shleimus of Torah of Mitzvahs, about the completion of fulfilling Hashem's commandments, and everyone fulfilling the Mitzvah of Yediyas Hashem, realizing that Hashem is the creator of the world. However, this is not the ultimate goal, because at this level, this is what Chassidus calls Bittel Hayesh. What's Bittel Hayesh? It means that we still are a Yesh, we're still an independent, we still feel that we're an independent existence. However, we're bottled to Hashem, we're subservient to Him, we fulfill His will, we recognize that He exists, that He creates us at every moment, but we still feel independent. There's still a symptom. There's still, there's still a certain, there's still a certain concealment, and there's sort of concealment. However, what's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is that the mitzvahs should bring us to such a level where we feel that we're completely one with Hashem. Where we're not de- independent at all from Hashem. Yeah, complete dvekas. Where, where, the dvar, where the dvar Hashem will be revealed in the world in such a way that the world is, isn't independent at all from the, from the, word, of Hashem, of the word of Hashem. That the, tzimtzum, the, the concealment will no longer be a concealment. Which means that although there will still be a world, and there will be everything that's here, but we'll see right through it. We'll realize what is its true, true existence. I heard a, 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 somewhat of a, maybe a, a muscle parable you could give for this idea. If you could just imagine, now when a person, uh, whenever you travel, you have to follow the signs, right? Follow the signs, look at the street signs and everything. So... If you can imagine, right, someone who doesn't know street signs or anything like that, and he just learned about street signs, and he walks out into the street, and the street itself says, you're on this street, right, and this is where you have to go, and this is the street. I mean, with, with the GPS today, it's almost like that, right? It, it, tells you, it tells you. So, it's like a different world. You're walking down the street, and the world itself is, 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 is the street itself is, is, is telling you, is opening its mouth, so to say, and telling you what it is. So you can imagine you walk outside and the world itself, you look, you see this is an expression of a higher power. This is an expression of God Almighty. Mm. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, very good. So that's the second. So that's the, so this, so that's the difference between, that's the difference between these two, these two, these two errors in the Yemaisa Mashiach. And the first error in the Yemaisa Mashiach, what is it all about? It's about the shleimus of Torah mitzvahs. It's about the completion of fulfilling Hashem's mitzvah. But what does it mean to fulfill a mitzvah? It means that Hashem is the king and we are his servants and we have to fulfill his will, but we're still independent. It's about under- knowing Hashem, which means that we're independent beings that we know Hashem. We understand that he's creating us. We, we're still independent. But the ultimate goal is, the Rebbe says in that, in that same sikh in Chilich of Zion, in volume 27 of the Kutti Sikh, is that Torah Mitzvah should bring us to the second Kuf of Yemaisa Mashiach. It should elevate us and be mezachich us and purify us and bring us to the level where we become, we, where we feel like we're one with Hashem, that it's not Kel Ha'olam, that Hashem is the God of the world, but Kel Ha'olam, that the world in Elikus, the world in Godliness are one. So just to bring out this idea a little bit more, a little bit more we'll talk about that, the idea that you, that, um, that you that you just mentioned, yeah. So it says one of the differences between these two eras in in Yemaisa Mashiach itself is that in the first era of Yemaisa Mashiach, there will still be ra, there will still be evil in the world, and furthermore, it will still be possible to do an avera. It will be possible to to go against the will of Hashem. Only in the second tkufa, in the second era of Yemaisa Mashiach, then it won't be possible. So what's the idea? So even in the first Kufa of Yemaisa Mashiach, even in the first era of Yemaisa Mashiach, so practically speaking, we're not going to do Averis, we're not going to sin, because we'll recognize that Hashem is the boss, and Hashem is here, constantly. right, constantly, right, and we, do, and we won't have a Yetzirah, so we won't have any desire to sin. Why would we sin? Right? Just like, it says, just like even an animal doesn't jump into fire, right? Doesn't right. mean it can't. It's not possible, but it wouldn't. Why would it do it? It's fire, you're going to get burnt. But nevertheless, you can't say that it's not possible. It's still possible. It's still possible. The very fact that we're still going to be independent, independent entity, we're going to be separate from Hashem, leaves the possibility for sin. It's, it gives us the possibility, we're still independent beings, we still have free choice. Technically, we could choose the wrong thing. So, so we won't choose, we'll make the right choice, right? It'll be an easy choice, right? 
You won't even call it a choice, right? Just like you don't call it a choice, to, oh, should I jump into fire or should I hurt myself or not, right? But if you really think about it, it's still a possibility. It's still a possibility. It's still there. It's still there. There's still Ra, there's still that possibility, there's still Efshorus Lara, the Rebbe calls it. There's still possibility to, to go to disobey the will of Hashem. And the second Tkufa of Yemaisa Mashiach, that won't be possible. Just like it's not possible for your hand to disobey your will, right? Because your hand is part of you, right? It's not possible for, for your hand to, to, to decide to do something that you don't want to do. Right, your hand is completely is completely bottled, completely subservient to 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 your to the willpower of your soul. So that's the way we'll be subservient to Hashem in the second kufa of Yemaisa Bashir. So the second kufa when it will talk to me? Like if I Oh, so that's this connects oh very good. So this connects to what it says in the Medrash that it says if a person will come to a person will come to uh, to pluck off a te'ena, it says a fig on Shabbos. It says the te'ena tsevachas. It says the, the, the fig will cry out Shabbos ayam. Today is Shabbos. What does that mean? It means the world will be in such a such a state that that the, the world is, won't allow you to do it. The world is saying no. Today is Shabbos. It just doesn't work. This doesn't it doesn't happen, right? Right. Right. Besides, for the fact you won't have a desire, it won't be possible, right? I, okay, I, I would have to point. I have to point out that according to this, you'll have to say that it's not even possible that a person will want to. That he'll even come to that state. That he'll come to pick a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a uh, that'll come to pick a, a fig on Shabbos, right? I mean, it could be Chazal mean that. In other words, in, in, in other words, theoretically speaking, if a person would come, right, the, 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 right, the the the. the the, uh, the the fig tree itself wouldn't allow him. The world will be so united with its godly source, with the will of Hashem, that it, it won't be possible. Literally, literally, will not be possible for 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 the world to d- deny the will of Hashem. What? Not even shogeg. Not even shogeg, right? It says even shogeg, even something inadvertent can only happen, right? Because of his gabrus yetsuhar, right? In other words, if a person if Shoigig is even less than this. Shoigig could be wouldn't even won't even happen in the first tukuf of Yom Yisro Mashiach. Shoigig means you just like by accident you don't by accident jump into fire. It doesn't happen. You don't accidentally jump into fire because it's unthinkable. You don't like forget like oh I forgot it was fire. Well, people kill the people in Shoigig sometimes. But yeah yeah but not not but generally speaking it doesn't happen. It doesn't generally speaking doesn't happen. But the second kufa won't even be possible. Right. Won't even be possible because the whole world, the person, and the whole world will be united with the will of Hashem. Sure, so, right. So it could be. It's not that it has to. When it says that they end the scream, I don't think that it has to scream. The yeah, point that they're trying to bring out is, is that the world will be so one with Hashem that the world itself will not allow the, you to d- disobey Hashem. It's not only that the person won't want to do it, want to do it. They're trying to bring out that the world itself won't won't will re- resist, so to say. The world itself will will will, will resist. So it could be this connects also with the fact that in the first kufa of Yemais and Mashiach, there won't be miracles according to the Rambam. Why not? Because the whole point is, what's the whole concept of a miracle? A miracle means that Hashem is running the world the way He wants. Teva, nature means that the world is in a separate, it's a separate entity that has rules, that has, that has a certain nature and operates in a certain way. And so initially, that's the way Hashem wants it to be. He wants the world to fulfill His will in that state. But eventually, the world has to be elevated. The world has to be elevated to a state, so to say, of miracles, where the world is not its own separate entity. And therefore, obviously, there's no nature. There's no, the, the nature of the world, the world is united with Hashem. And of course, Hashem is not, is not bound by the laws of nature. So all of this also connects to another surprising statement of of our sages. They say that in the, according to the Alter Rebbe, in the Tkufa of Tchias Hamesim, in this era of Tchias Hamesim, mitzvahs betelos, mitzvahs betelos, laws of love. They say that there will no longer be mitzvahs. The question is, how could that be? The mitzvahs, the, the mitzvahs are the rotsin atzmi of Hashem. They're Hashem's, they're Hashem's essential will. How could it be? That finally, when we reach the ultimate state of Tchias Hametzim, mitzvahs betelos, there won't be mitzvahs. How could that be? 
So the Rebbe says that it's actually the exact, uh, exact opposite point. It says like this. If you, and this is the Sim Haramba from Tafshin and Beis. When we say that mitzvahs are bottle, that they'll be nullified, we mean in respect to the command to the person. So when we say that the mitzvahs are bottle, we mean the concept of a commandment. The fact that Hashem is commanding us. But the existence of the mitzvah itself will, will exist forever. The mitzvah, as the Ramam says, they'll exist forever for all eternity. However, not as a command to a person, to man, but rather mitzvahs will continue to exist as Hashem's will. What does this mean? V'ha'az bara baza. Ha'gedeh de mitzvahs tzivoy lo ha'adam shayach rakish ha'adam hu metziyaz b'fnei atzmai. The whole concept of a mitzvah, a commandment to man, is only possible when the person is in a separate entity. And then it's possible to say that Hashem is commanding him to act according to Hashem's will. However, after the person completes his avoda, his service in fulfilling mitzvahs, that his whole entity, every single detail of his being is permeated with Hashem's will. And he becomes, he fulfills the ultimate goal of mitzvahs that he becomes completely united with Hashem until he becomes one entity with Hashem. That the Jewish people through Torah, they become one with Hashem. When we reach the state, the way it's going to be in this era of Trias HaMesim, it's not possible to say that Hashem is commanding the person, since he's not a separate entity. The only, the only thing you could say that exists is Hashem's will. Which is definitely being fulfilled through the mitzvahs. Meaning not through, the, not through Hashem commanding us. But it's happening automatically. So uh, exactly. We'll still be putting on tefillin and we'll still be... Davening and we'll still <laughs> be what? Not, not fasting, right? We'll still be doing all of the mitzvahs, all 613 mitzvahs in the most perfect way. I think but the most important is the now we uh, that's right. The kabbalists will be fulfilled, but they're not going to be done in such a way that Hash- that we feel that we're an independent entity from Hashem, and Hashem is commanding us, and we're choosing to fulfill Hashem's commandment. We'll be past that stage. Yeah. The whole purpose of Yemais HaMashiach is that we should become so in sync with the mitzvahs that we reach a state where we're not at all, we don't feel at all separate from Hashem. Our whole existence is just fulfilling Hashem's will. So that's the second kufa. That's the second era uh, of, 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 of Yemais HaMashiach. The whole, it, it's, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different, whole, whole different, uh, whole different level. That's right. Yeah, you're pointing out that there would be many tzaddikim, even Rosh and Arin, that, that there were many mitzvahs that they were not able to fulfill because they never entered Eretz Yisrael, and then they'll be able to fulfill them. So what we've said to sum up, what we've said over here is. That's right. So let's to sum up. So what's the difference between the two stages uh, of Mashiach, right? So right now, so we could even say like this. So there's basically three, there's three levels. So we have Olam Hazeh, this world before Mashiach comes. This world 
it's a world where there's a war between good and evil, where it's a challenge to fulfill Hashem's will. And we're, in a certain sense, we're not able to fulfill Hashem's will properly because we don't have a Beis HaMikdash and we're not able to bring the Korbanes and there's many mitzvahs that we're not able to fulfill until Mashiach, uh, Mashiach comes. So that's this world. This world is where it's a challenge to fulfill Hashem's will. Yeah. Then uh, when Mashiach comes, Mashiach is coming to bring the world to a state where we will be able to fulfill Hashem's will properly. Where it's not going to be a challenge to fulfill Hashem, Hashem's will. We're not going to have a Yetzirah, a Yetzirah. We'll be able, we'll have a Beis HaMikdash. There'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll be Gilead Lekos, we'll see that there is a God in the world. And so therefore, automatically, it's not going to be such a challenge to fulfill Hashem's will. Nevertheless, we'll still feel independent from Hashem. We'll still feel that we're a Yesh. We're an independent existence and we're fulfilling Hashem's will. We'll realize that Hashem is creating us and He is the master of the world and He is our king. But we'll still feel that the world and ourselves were independent. There's still nature, there's still a world, there's still, there's still some other the separate existence that Hashem created and is creating. But the ultimate goal is that, is that through fulfilling Hashem's will, through fulfilling all the mitzvahs, eventually we'll reach a state where we become one with the mitzvah, so to say. We become one with Hashem's will, where, we, where we're not a separate existence at all, where it won't even be possible to go against the will of Hashem because we'll be completely one with Hashem's will. Exactly. And that's the, that's the truth of Tchiyas HaMesim, which is completely beyond nature. In other words, there won't be any concept of nature, of any limitation of this, of this world. It'll be clear how the whole world is just an expression of the will of Hashem. Is that right? Hundred percent bittel, bittel by Matthias, exactly. So that's that, so that's the that's the say that's the say that That's right. The whole concept of 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 um, reward and punishment will only be possible in Yemaisa Mashiach, right? But once you reach the tkuf of Tchias Hamaisim, it says on on the concept that is the that is the greatest schar, that is the greatest reward, that is the schar, exactly. That's no longer we the avoid is finished. The avoid is finished, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So that's so that's where we're he- that's where we're heading. So that's where we're heading. So we have to realize that now we're, we're working to bring Yemaisa Mashiach, bring it to bring it to uh, to its full glory. But that's not the ultimate goal. Ultimately, that Yemaisa Mashiach is leading us to the second kufa of Tchiyas Hamesim, when we'll be literally one with Hashem's will, and may we be zoicha that we should this process should begin already and Mashiach should take us out of Golos and we'll start the Kufa of Yemaisa Mashiach which will lead us straight into Tchias HaMesim. Thank you.